Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. In this lesson, we are going to talk about layers a little more. So we've had a little bit of an introduction to layers already, where we looked at the document that we created earlier, where we had our text layer and we had all of our images. We renamed them and everything. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper into um, what we've already got, and then we're going to go a little deeper into this one, and then we're going to potentially look at some other documents as well, where we're going to create some things from scratch. All right, but let's just at least look at a document that's already complete so we can understand how the layers panel works. So you can see here I have the layers panel open right here. And then if we deconstruct what I have here on my layers panel, you'll see I have all my images right here. And you can see I have it inside of a folder or a group called photos. I have here this Italian flag layer. I have this rectangle. And I'm just going to rename that. Notice I can just double click on that. And I'll just call that text frame great and I'm done with that and then notice here I have my text actual and then in fact this is inside of the text in box grouping so notice when I navigate through all of these I can go ahead and collapse and expand that all right now earlier we talked about the ability to change the visibility of one of our objects you can see here I click on this little eyeball and that will go away now the thing to note about this is that not only is it going away at this time, but if I were to then export this as a JPEG, it would in fact export it without the image. So that's important to know that making something invisible on the layers panel, also when you're finally doing your production, will keep it as you see it in the layer itself. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Good to know. And it's also a nice little trick. All right, and then um, in future lessons in my advanced class, we talk about something called layer comps, which is going to be very important to understand when you have something you want to see and when you don't want to see at different times. Okay, so just put a little pin in that for your future learning. Okay, so this is how we can work with our layers. Now, what is the point of layers? Number one, it keeps everything isolated and independent from each other. Okay, so if I wanted to choose this image separate from the other images, I can very easily do that. So if I wanted to move it around, resize it and everything like that, fantastic. Okay, but what it also does, as the name implies, is it has kind of a stacking order around things. Okay, so why and how is this Italian flag showing? As opposed to, well, why wouldn't it be buried? Who knows what's going on here? Well, look at the order of where it is. On the bottom, that's where my images are in terms of the stacking order, meaning what's in the front and what's behind it all. So if I were to drag this down below favelas, notice I no longer see the flag because it is below it. So when it's below it, it's behind it. So just think about that. I can go ahead and drag that back up and very easily now because I've changed the stacking order of it. Now, this Italian flag in and of itself is not see-through like this. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is opacity. Opacity just basically means how much you can see through something, the transparency of something. So I want you to notice that on my layers panel, I have quite a few options here. And one of them is opacity right there. And then notice this is at 70% opacity. Now I can very easily change that to be almost completely invisible. And I could also make it so it's completely opaque. See that? So that's what the flag looked like originally. Right? So I can just do that and I can kind of just, you know, eyeball it. Now, a nice little trick, by the way, is if I type out just the number two, that takes me to 20%. Watch what happens when I type out the number seven and it goes to 70%. See that? That's a nice little trick. I didn't have to use the mouse. I'm not clicking anywhere. It automatically does that. I say nine that goes to 90, one goes to 10 and zero goes to 100%. Okay, so try that out. I know it's a little bit weird. It feels a little disjointed, but in fact, you are controlling it just by tapping on a number, even without selecting anything. So that's pretty great how we can work with opacity on things. What else has some opacity settings on it? Well, let's take a look at this little text frame. Click on that. What's the opacity for this? It's 40%. Let's bring it up to 90 and you can see what it does there. Let's bring it down to three. Let's go to six. Okay, I like that. So I click away. Now I can see that there.
Okay, so just important to understand all that. Now, one other aspect of working with your layers panel is locking your layers. Because let's just say, for example, you know, I want to choose this image that's behind the band, and I keep accidentally clicking on the band, and I don't want to do that. When I say the band, I mean the text frame here. And I really try to get this image, and it won't let me do it. So if you lock your layer, you see that? I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Notice a little lock appears. And now I'm able to then just choose, right? Okay, you know what? Here's another one that's a problem. Oh, you know what? I should lock this too. So now, now I'm able to isolate this image without having the flag or the text frame in its way. Now, why were those getting in the way? Why? Because they're on the topmost layers above my creamy pastel image. So because they were in the front, they were sort of getting kind of priority in terms of me selecting. So I had to lock them. You know, sometimes you may decide to just make them invisible. You can do that too. That prevents you from clicking on them. Or you just click on lock and then you're good to go in terms of selecting something else. So good thing to understand. Now I can go and unlock it very easily just by clicking on the lock icon there. And then they become unlocked, right? So it's as easy as that. Really, really simple. Okay, now in future lessons, we are also going to talk about these guys right here. Do you see how we have like these different effects? So we're going to talk about those in a little bit. So I'm just going to put a pin in that. But what's important for us to understand is about grouping. So I'm going to sort of transition into this guy right here. So we can start getting some grouping down for all of our content. So notice I have four images and I have my text right here. And I also have this little box right around the um, the text. So let's now group it. So if you look way down here in our layers panel, you're going to see that there's this little folder icon right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is simply select this first layer and then hold down my shift key and select the last one. So now they're all selected. So therefore, when I select this, they're now going to become a group. And if I open it up, you can see all four of them are in there. And then very simply, I'm just going to double click on that. And I'm just going to say images. Great. And guess what I'm going to do next? I'm going to go ahead and click on this and then hold down my shift key and select that and click on my little group icon and then double click. And I'll just call this text. OK, and we'll see how does that compare to these guys here. You can see just like that. And you can see I also have the flag on there. So if you recall, what can I do? I need to place my flag in there. So how do I place? Let's go over here to file and we're going to go to place embedded and let's go to our Italy folder and I'll bring that in and I might need to make that a little bit bigger. So not a problem. Let's just get adjusted here and because my canvas is a little bigger, it's going to make that just like that. Now, I have to hit return or click on the check mark to confirm that. But why can't I see through it? This one had see through. Well, what did we learn earlier? We could either just type out a number to change the opacity, or we can come over to here and do it just like that. And then we're starting to see what we want to see. So I'm just going to tap on the number seven, maybe eight. OK, it's OK, but something is a little bit off, isn't there? because I can't really read the Italy and the box is a little bit weird. What do you think is going on here? Oh, right. My flag is covering everything else up. So it's about the stacking order here. Well, what is going to be in the forefront of everything? It's the text and that text box. So very simply, I'm just going to drag this up on top just like that. And there we go. And then if I want to need to isolate the rectangle a little bit more, I can select the rectangle and then I'm going to make that a little bit wider. Let's just readjust us here. There we go. OK, I can make that a little bit wider and I can make this opacity come down a little bit as well. And see how the opacity is really nice because it gives you like a sense of depth to things. It almost kind of looks like, you know, window if you will, right? It kind of creates the illusion of reality in a way because it does give you that type of depth and perspective within your entire um, image experience around things. So it's worthwhile to sometimes play around with it, especially when you have 
um, framing of some kind. It really does work with, with text and framing as well. Okay, now as we progress through um, our lessons, you are going to see we're going to work with a few of these other ones down here. You're going to see that we have this effects. We're going to work with masking and we're going to work with adjustment layers. Now this one right here is just very simply to create a new layer. Okay, so sometimes you're going to create a new layer when it's not done for you automatically. When you bring in an image, it's done for you automatically. If you're creating text in there, it's done for you automatically. You don't have to worry about it. So that's pretty great. Next to that one is just the ability to delete a layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock this background layer. And I don't need that, right? It's not really serving any purpose. So I can easily just drag it in there or just simply click. And then I'm going to say, yes, I don't need it. And nothing really changes. It was unnecessary. Okay. So really, really good stuff here. So layers, layers, layers is so important to understand, to master, and then really, really use them to your benefit in terms of controlling how the images come, come together, how you're organizing in terms of your grouping, how you're working with opacity, how you're locking the visibility, everything. Really critical. So we'll be doing many, many lessons moving forward on this. But if you haven't been practicing along to create this, what we have here, please pause the video and go ahead and practice right now. Thanks. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.